Hello everyone, this week's video is going to teach you everything you need to know about setting parameters for my blocks in the EV3G programming software. The EV3G programming software gives us the ability to take large pieces of code and compress them down into my blocks. So now instead of writing this code over and over again within your program, you can just insert a my block in its place. Uh, for this video, I'm assuming that you know the basics of my blocks, and if you don't, you should go see my video on that right now. But uh, if you're familiar with other programming languages, you can imagine that a my block in EV3G is analogous to defining a function in another language like C or Python. And now we come to an issue where if you're using a my block several different times, but you'd like to adjust it, like say you have a line follower, like a PID line follower, and you want to adjust some of your K values. Uh, and you want to use it various times without your, throughout your program with different K values each time, how are we able to adjust these numbers? Well, in C or Python, when you define a function, you can pass a variable to a function, and it would change the value of the variable within that, that um, uh, function. In EV3G, we have something similar where we can set parameters, and parameters are kind of like external um, they're just like passing variables in a function in another language where you have um, these things and you can enter in values into a my block like say you have a line follower and you have a KP value that you want to change you make a parameter for your KP value so you can adjust the value on the outside of the my block and it will affect it just for that that one my block so I'm going to show you just how you make these parameters right now okay so for the sake of today's example I'm going to be using my PID line following program now you don't necessarily need to understand how a PID line follower works to follow along with this tutorial but what you do need to know is that a PID line follower like any line follower and like a lot of different programs has a lot of different values that you can adjust currently I'm using variables to store a lot of these values and these adjustable values are typically your k values so kp, ki, and kd like I said you don't necessarily need to know what those are as well as your target light value which is the light value that your color sensor is going to be looking for and then finally we can also make a parameter to adjust the speed and um, so what we first need to do is we need to highlight our entire program and compress it into a my block. Now like I said before I'm going to gloss over the basics of my blocks because I've already explained them in a previous tutorial but we're going to need to zoom out until we can see the entire program take our cursor and drag it over the entire program that we want now in this case I'm using a line follower which is inside of a loop and I want to exclude the loop from my selection the reason behind this is I may want to change the status of the loop um, depending on where I have it in my program. So highlight everything that's inside the loop, excluding the loop itself. Go to Tools, My Block Builder, and now we're going to come here. We'll just give it some kind of name, PID Line. Like I said, I'm glossing over the basics of um, uh, doing this. Now, what we're going to do, instead of going right to hitting Finish, we're going to come over to this plus sign right here where it says add parameters and we're going to click on that right now it gives us two tabs parameter setup and parameter icons in parameter setup we're going to give it a name hopefully something that you'll remember and that is relevant to what you've uh, uh, using the parameters for so in my case I'm going to make my first parameter power and this is going to adjust how fast the line follower, the line following robot will move across the line. So I say set the motor's target power to 75% or 25% so I can adjust this. Now our parameter types can either be inputs or outputs. Outputs would be data wires that are coming out of the block. Like if you're using a my block that calculated a number based on some inputs, um, like did some math operations and output a number, that's what you would use for that. Uh, what we're interested in right now for this line follower is an input and this is a value that you put into it which is exa it's exactly what it sounds like we have three different styles that we can choose this one is just a text input where you would type a number or text directly in this is a slider like on the st move steering block you can slide left and right and then this is a vertical slider this is what I'm going to select because I want to use power and I think this is most appropriate but this is a matter of what you think you would like to use. 
and of course you can choose numerical values, logical values, text values, and also some array values, but for power we're going to want to use number. Our default value can be zero, and for power our minimum should be negative 100, so that's full power in reverse, and our maximum should be positive 100. So after we've done that, we can go to parameter icons and choose a nice memorable icon for our um, parameter. So in this case I think this little speedometer would be an excellent choice because it helps us remember exactly what it is we're trying to adjust here. And after you've made all of the desired parameters what you're going to do is click finish and it's going to create a my block with the parameters that you have defined. Now our work here isn't exactly done because yes we have a my block that has a parameter but if you don't do anything further when you type a value into your parameter it's not going to do anything because we need to tell the programming language where this number that we're typing in is supposed to go now we want to adjust the power of the my block like I said so we're going to find where in the program we enter in the power in this case I have it right here I have it set as a default of 75 percent now what we're going to do to make it so that this can be controlled by our parameter is this gray block here that appears. We're going to take this tab and drag it all the way over to wherever we want it to go. In this case, this is where our power is defined. So I'm going to have to zoom out because it's a rather large program. But take the data wire all the way over and then plug it in as the power. And now if we go over to where our block was originally defined now we have a my block entitled PID line within our loop so if we zoom in on it there we have the block and we have a single parameter that we've named power and we have a sliding bar so now I can adjust the speed of my line following to whatever I'd like so I can go positive in any power or reverse in any power and this is excellent because now I don't have to go back into my program and redo the power each time and I can also quickly adjust it. Now with a PID line follower you can also add a lot more values like I said you can add adjustments for your K values for your uh, target light value and like or your power value like I did here and you're going to follow the same procedure that I just defined right now. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.